Good morning, everybody. My name is Emily Williams. I'm a coral biologist here at the Florida Aquarium in Apollo Beach. Happy Earth Day. We're coming to you with a special episode of C-SPAN to make an awesome announcement about our coral work here. Uh, we have uh, spawned a new species of coral. We are the first facility to spawn the ridged cactus coral in human care. And these are some of our parents that we have of this species. So these corals are here as part of a rescue program led by Florida Fish and Wildlife and NOAA as part of a rescue program from stony coral tissue loss disease. Now stony coral tissue loss disease affects many species of coral in the Florida reef tract. And we have several of those species here that we have been working on spawning. Uh, one of which is our previous breakthrough of spawning pillar coral in our project coral systems. So now we have made another breakthrough with the ridge cactus coral. So these are our larval collectors. So unlike pillar coral, which you might have seen videos of in the past, ridge cactus corals are brooders. So there are two different ways that corals can reproduce. They can either broadcast spawn or they can brood. So these corals keep the larvae in their tissues until they are fully developed and ready to settle. So it's kind of like the corals giving live birth. When they release their larvae, their larvae are fully developed and ready to settle, and they already have their zooxanthellae. Now zooxanthellae are an important part of coral biology. They allow the coral to get some energy from sunlight. So zooxanthellae are little algaes that live in their tissue that give them that nice, beautiful brown color. So the babies that come from this ridged cactus coral are already ready to settle and start photosynthesizing. So what's really exciting about these kinds of corals is that no one's ever reproduced this species in human care before. So we were really excited to see that they were able to reproduce under human care because we weren't sure if they were going to be able to do that. Now we have worked with species like staghorn coral in the past and these are a little bit different. They do grow a little bit more slowly um, but they are very important for reef biology in Florida. Now they might not look like they provide a lot of habitat and they look pretty small and they are small compared to some other species like pillar coral that can get to the size of a school bus. Um, but the amazing thing about coral reefs is the large diversity of species that they have. So we don't only want to conserve the big characteristic species like staghorn coral and pillar coral, all these smaller species are just as important for preserving the biodiversity of our reefs. So being able to reproduce these in human care is a huge breakthrough for this species um, because we know we can help them reproduce um, and restore their populations in the wild. So these buckets that they're in are larval collectors. One of our biologists, Austin Bushman, designed these um, to collect specifically from these species. Um, a lot of coral species are broadcast spawners and they release all their um, gametes in one big event, uh, whereas corals like these, they release their larvae over a couple hours overnight. So if we're working with species like staghorn coral or pillar coral, we can collect their larvae and their gametes in a pretty short period of time. But what we can't do is sit in the greenhouse for eight to ten hours overnight, every night for several weeks. These corals release their larvae over a very long period of time. So we Austin designed these larval collectors to help us collect the larvae without having to sit here overnight um, for weeks. So what happens is we have water feeding these buckets to help maintain oxygen and temperature in these buckets. And when these corals release the larvae, they're positively buoyant, which means they float to the surface. So when they're at the surface, they go over this little slip and slide into this sieve. And it might be kind of hard to see, but there are some larvae in there right now. These guys were in the buckets overnight. So we haven't quite collected their larvae yet. We wanted you guys to be able to see the whole process. So there are some larvae in there. So all those little brown dots are coral larvae from this particular coral. And another benefit of using these larval collectors is we know exactly 
which corals are producing the larvae so we know who their parents are. And maybe someday down the road when these corals get big enough, we can do genetic work on them to find out um, you know, who their other parent is. Because obviously the, larva, the coral that they're coming from is the mom, um, kind of. It gets a little complicated with corals. So these particular corals are what we call simultaneous hermaphrodites, which means they are both male and female at the same time. So when they're spawning, they can release, lar release sperm and also take in sperm from other corals to fertilize the eggs in their tissue. So right now, we only have four corals in our buckets. We don't have enough room to do everybody at the same time. But we have collected over 300 larvae so far um, in this process. And we're going to continue to monitor these corals to see how long they're going to spawn. Uh, like I said, no one has ever been able to reproduce these corals in human care before. And we also don't know very much about their reproduction at all, even in the wild. Since they re release their larvae over such a long period of time, it's really hard to observe this, these events in the wild. So not only is having them here preserving them from dying from the disease in the wild, it's also helping us to understand a lot more about their reproduction. So when we started looking at these corals, when we started putting them in the larval collectors, we were actually looking at a completely different species. Um, it was another species in the same genus, Mycetophilia elysiae, or knobby cactus coral. That's what we were expecting to spawn. Um, nobody has ever collected data on the ridge cactus coral spawning this time of year. So when we found larvae coming from these corals, we were very surprised, but it's also very exciting because we're learning a lot about these corals as we go. So once the larvae are collected in these sieves, we count them so we know exactly how many larvae we have. And then we very carefully move them over into a settlement bin. So a settlement bin is something we use to give them a nice calm place to settle. So here's our settlement bin, and if you look carefully you can see some little larvae swimming around. And all those tiles are where we want them to settle. Now the reason we use those tiles is so that they have a safe place to grow and so they don't settle on the walls of the container that they're in. So we can move them and count them and take pictures of them as we need to. So once they settle, we move them back into the bigger system so they can get good light and be with the parents so they can help get their microbiome balanced. Um, so these corals are actually about a year old. Um, we think they are the same species, but they are a little bit of a mystery uh, because they came in on the corals when we got them from Florida Fish and Wildlife and NOAA when they were rescued from the wild. So we don't know if they were spawned here or not, but they are about a year old. So they're pretty fast growing, um, but this little guy right here is from this year. So he settled just a couple weeks ago and he's already quite big. Uh, one of the really exciting things about these corals is how big the larvae are. When we first saw these guys in our lava collectors, we weren't sure what they were because they are huge for coral larvae. And like I said before, they are spawned with zooxanthellae already in their tissues. So they're very cute. They're brown, but they have little white freckles on them. They're adorable and also really big. So we're hoping that that means they're very hardy and they, they will grow really well. And so far we've had pretty good success. Um, as you can see, we have quite a few that have survived over the past year and we didn't even know that they were there. So now that we know what we're looking for, we can take really good care of them. Now I'm going to pull this little guy out um, so you guys can see them under the microscope. So bear with me for a moment once I, while I pull him out of the water and put him in the microscope. Okay, so we'll get a nice up-close look at this guy. They're very cute. Once they settle, they almost look like little flowers. 
So this guy, like I said, is just a couple weeks old. He is a ridged cactus coral. And he was spawned here at the Florida Aquarium. So these corals have been in our care for a little bit over a year. So we know that they have gone through their entire gametogenic cycle here at the Florida Aquarium, which is very exciting because we know that they're getting all the natural cues that they need to reproduce. And we know that they're happy, they're healthy, because only happy, healthy animals want to reproduce. So I'm gonna put this guy back. Corals can stay out of the water for a little bit, um, but we don't wanna stress him out too much. And as you can see, I have him in this little water tray so he's not out of the water for too long. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about our scientific breakthrough. We are very excited and we're going to continue to observe our corals and hopefully get a lot more larvae as we go and raise more corals. And once they get big enough, we might be able to release them back onto the reef and continue to store our reefs here in Florida.